What is up you guys? It is Brianna and today we're going to be sitting down and doing another tutorial using the Animal Crossing X Colourpop collection and the palette that we are going to be using today is this cute little purple vibe called Label of the Ball and I don't know about you guys but I really like the color story of this one. Like it's just really fun and different. Ooh I about smacked myself in the face there but it's kind of like this smoky purple type of vibe and I love this duochrome shade right here. It's kind of like a bluish purple shade. And if you're new to my Animal Crossing series here on my YouTube channel, what I am doing since this collection is so large and that there are four eyeshadow palettes within this collection, I am doing a different video using each palette. Just in case you know you're interested in only certain palettes or if you want more inspiration later on, it's just a little bit easier that way. And I'll have all of those videos linked in the description box down below for you. In case you're interested in seeing swatches and side-by-side -side comparisons, I included those in my Nook Ink palette review, the green one, and again, I'll have that linked in the description box down below for you. So before we test out this eyeshadow palette as well as other goodies from this collection, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on my Instagram page or my TikTok, it is at Brianna Faye as well. So to save on some time, I just primed my eyes off camera using my ABH eye primer, but you guys have been hyping me a lot to start wearing my hair more like this. And like, don't get me wrong, like I don't mind it once I have my makeup on, but until I have like a full bead on, I feel like I look like I have like a massive forehead. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. And also I never know what to do with these like little chunky bits until I have everything on because then I can put them forward and I don't like blend my foundation into it. I'm gonna stop my rambling, but the first shade that we are going to be going in with is this really pretty pale purple shade. And this one is called Taylor's Ticket. I'm just going to be taking it in my crease using this brush from Morphe. It's an E27. Ooh, she has some pigment to her. Because sometimes with these like paler pastel purples, sometimes they're a little bit more on the buildable side. This one actually has a lot of pigment to it for being a pastel. So I'm just going to go in with a second layer because I want to see what happens. Yeah, so you actually don't even have to do two layers if you don't want to. And again, what I'm doing is popping it in my crease and then doing these little circular motions to blend it upwards towards my brow. And I'm also kind of like winging it out on this edge too, just a little bit. So far, like this shade is really cute and it's also blending out really nice too because sometimes purples, they can be really tricky to work with, especially pastel ones. But this one looks nice and smooth on the eye. So now I'm just going to go in with the darker matte in the palette. And this one is called Serene Sable. And I'm just going to be taking it on this Morphe M507 brush and popping it in my crease. Ooh, she is intense. And also, she's not acting weird either. And what I'm doing is like doing these like little circular motions to blend it upwards. Okay, I don't know if you like this too if you play Animal Crossing, but Able Sisters kind of makes me a little irritated because I see everybody with all of these cute outfits and accessories online. Like, I watch a lot of YouTube videos like going over like Animal Crossing stuff. And like their characters are always in like the cutest stuff and it's not like it's custom or anything. But I never get the cute stuff in my shop, like ever. Like it's always like doctor masks or like these random like shoes and like leggings. I never get the really like adorable things I see everybody else get. Granted, I do not time travel on my island. I know a lot of people do it, but personally for me, I just like never do it. I don't know why, but I like never get the cute stuff. Because I'm waiting to get the visual punk dress because it is like so my vibe on my island. Like I have a Halloween theme and it has like all of these like ruffly bits and it has like leather and like buckles. It just looks really cute but I can never find it. And I literally play every single day and try to find it in my shop. Let me know what your favorite clothing item is in game if you do play, and also let me know how long it took you to get it. So I'm just gonna do another layer just to like really like amplify this shade. But again, like this purple formula is really, really nice. Like it is not hard to work with whatsoever. Cause I mean like, look at how smooth it is. It is blending out fantastic. It's not chunky. It's not giving me any harsh lines. You know what, I'm actually just going to take this purple on this brush from Anastasia. It's in A25, because I just want this dark purple to have a little bit more of a moment. Like, the M507 was applying it beautifully, it's just, I want like a little bit more purple. Oh yeah, like, this shade though, honestly, it's just blending out like butter. Like, if you want a good purple shade that has like a grayish smoky feel to it, you're going to absolutely love this one. And when you are building up the shade and layering it up, make sure you are winging it out on this outer edge. I like to run my brush right underneath my brow bone. You can feel it if you have a brush right in here. I just like to follow the natural structure of my face. Okay, but seriously, like these shades of purple are really pretty. They definitely have like that smoky purple type of vibe to them. But off camera though, I am going to cut my crease. I'm just going to do like one of those like floating ones. And then afterwards, I'll be right back to finish up the lid. 
So here's where I'm at right now after cutting the crease and now we're gonna do something a little bit more on the funky side for the lid but I'm first going to take a sticky note because I do want to get a nice harsh line on this outer edge. You can also use tape if you want but personally I don't like to use tape because it does cause premature wrinkles if you're not careful and sticky notes are just a little bit easier. And again I'm just gonna line it up from my lower lash line up to that point of my cut crease. So you're kind of looking for something like this. And I'm just going to take that dark purple shade and pack it on on this outer edge, leaving about an eighth of an inch gap. Again, I'm probably going to go about, you know, maybe like a third the way in, about right up to where my eye color starts. And when I'm packing it down, I am like pressing it into the skin. I'm not doing a swiping motion, so I don't want to disturb anything that we have going on underneath. And the brush that I'm using is this one from ColourPop. It's an E26. Just a little tiny shader brush. And this hair is going to drive me nuts. And I'm also going to do the exact same thing to the inner third. Again, using that same brush and going right to where my eye color starts. And then for the most satisfying part, there we go, the super sharp line. So for the center of the lid, we are going to be going in the shade that I'm the most excited for, and that is this really pretty kind of like smoky gray with blue iridescent in it. It's the shimmer shade out of the palette. And this one is called Custom Design. And then using a damp and flat shader brush, I'm just going to be applying it to the center of my lid. Anywhere that that base is still showing. But, it's definitely like an iridescent type of vibe. I mean, it's a really pretty shade. It's just not as like intense on the first layer like the other ones have been from the other palettes. So I'm going to go in with a second layer. See if it like amplifies it. Oh yeah. Like... If you want this one to be really intense, you definitely have to do two layers with it. But again, after the second layer, you can see it's like really, really sparkly. Definitely one of those like extra type of shimmers. And when applied, it almost has more of like a bluish gray kind of vibe to it. Whereas in the pan, it does look a little bit more of like a gray. And I'm just taking whatever's left and kind of like feathering it into that dark purple. And the next step that we are going to do, you can skip if you want because I know not everybody's into glitter, but I want to go in with it because it just looks super pretty. But it's this one right here. It's kind of like an iridescent lavender and it is called Able Sisters. And then using my finger, I'm just going to apply it right on top of that shimmer that we just applied. Right in the center of my lid. Okay, this glitter on top of that shimmer, oh my gosh, like it brought it to a whole other level. It is so pretty. And I'm just taking whatever's left on my finger and then kind of like tapping it into the edges. But again, like that just looks so sparkly and extra. I'm just going to take a little bit more too and just put it right in the center. Just to like really amplify it. I mean like look at that. It is so blinding. Like if you like press glitters, you will absolutely love this one. I seriously cannot wait to see what the full unfinished look turns out to be like because honestly I'm just so obsessed with the eyes so far. But off camera though, I am going to like clean things up a little bit because I do want to kind of correct the shape just a little bit. And I'm also, you know, going to apply like liner, lashes, you know, my complexion products, all of that stuff. And then afterwards, I'll be right back to finish up the look. So here's what I'm at right now after doing that off camera. And now we're going to go in with a little bit of blush for some color on the face. And I'm just going to go in with this mauve pink one called Flower Power. And I'm just going to be taking it on a blush brush and then applying it to the apple of my cheek and then up onto my cheekbone. I'm just going to go in with a second layer, but I feel like this blush is going to pair really well with this palette because it's kind of like a mauve, but at the same time it's really bright. It's kind of like a pinky purple. Like it's not like a super like intensely bright blush. It's kind of like a wearable bright one. When I first saw this blush, I thought it would pair the best with this palette. And honestly, I think it really plays up the crease colors. So now we're going to work on the lips because I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I just need lips after doing like my face products. But I'm just going to first line them using this House Laboratories R.I.P. Lip Liner in the shade Drag. And it's like a really cool tone purple shade. I seriously love the color of this lip liner so much, especially with smoky purples. And then for the Just a Tint, I'm just going to go in with the Pick of the Bunch bundle. And I'm going to go in with this one called Coconut Juice. And I know it sounds like it's going to look really weird, but I swatched it on the back of my hand and it looked amazing. But this in the tube looks kind of like a chocolatey brown. But I just loved it over this lip liner when I was kind of like figuring out what I wanted to do today. Because I mean, I could have went in with a nude color, but I don't know. I want something a little bit spicier. Oh yeah. Like this with that lip liner. Amazing. You can also use these by themselves too. This one on its own is kind of like a purpley kind of like chocolatey color. 
Again, it is a little bit more of a sheer formula too. So now we're going to work on the lower lash line just to help like balance everything out because it is looking real top heavy right now. But I'm just going to go back again in the palette and then mix the two matte shades together. Kind of like a one to one ratio. And then I'm just going to take this combination on this Luxie 230 One Small Tapered Blending Brush. And then pop it right underneath my lower lash line doing back and forth motions. Honestly, I'm just going to go in with the matte dark purple by itself now. So I'd probably go in with a little bit more of the dark purple and maybe like a tiny like little tap into the lighter one. And now we're going to be doing my absolute favorite part which is the inner corner highlight. And you could go in with this shade out of the palette but honestly I want to go in with the Super Shock Shadow that launched. And this one is called Balloon Pop. I'm just going to be taking it on this Anastasia A14 little pencil brush and packing it super heavy in my inner corner. And also slightly bringing it underneath the inner tear duct area. Oh yeah. That actually pairs really well with it. It seems like this Super Shock Shadow is one of those ones where depending on the colors that you pair it with, it looks completely different. Because when I used it with the Nook Ink palette, it actually looked like a smoky, like, grayish pink. And I'm just going to go in with a second layer just to make it, like, extra sparkly. And this Super Shock Shadow has an ultra glitter formula, so it is, like, real extra when applied. I would probably say this is my favorite look I have done so far using the collection. Again, we haven't used all the palettes yet. I do have one more to use after this video, but oh, like these purples are absolutely beautiful. I love how they look. I like the hint of smokiness. It's just a really cool vibe. So let's go over everything that we used today. And of course, let's start with the label of the ball eyeshadow palette. And again, like this packaging, absolutely gorgeous. I love the light kind of like lavender gray kind of vibe it has. And also the color story, like these smoky purples, like, oh, like they're absolutely beautiful. So let's talk about the formula and let's go over the mattes first. And this first shade that we used today called Taylor's Ticket, the Pastel Purple. This one is very pigmented for what it is because again, like pastels are one of those types of formulas that are usually a little bit more on the buildable side. However, this one is like really pigmented right away and super easy to work with and blend out. And this is one of those shades when you look at it in the pan, it looks like a matte with shimmer in it. But when you apply it, the shimmer does not stick like it applies 100% matte. As for the second matte shade that we used called Serene Sable, I am absolutely obsessed with this color. Like, it just has an amazing formula, it does not get harsh lines, and it's super easy to work with and blend out. I will say, when I first initially applied it, I thought it was, like, really pigmented, but the more that I have worked with it, to me, it's a little bit more on the buildable side. Again, it does have a lot of pigmentation to it, but it's not, like, super, like, pow in your face right away. You do have to do about two to three layers to get it to look like it does in the pan. Again, it's a really gorgeous shade and it's not hard to work with and if you're a beginner, you will not struggle with this shade whatsoever. Like, it is super easy to work with. As for the shimmer shade in this palette called Custom Design, this one's really pretty and I love how it applies and looks on the eye. And I will say when you look at it in the pan, it looks like a gray with light blue shimmer on it. But when you apply it, it does apply a little bit more on the blue side, so just keep that in mind if you do get this palette. And one thing I will note too is that it is a very blinding shimmer, but it's not as blinding as the other two palettes that we have used. Like the shimmers in those two palettes are like extremely like intense and like super metallic and glittery. Whereas this one does have like that glittery look to it, but it's not as intense as those other two. And the last shade that we have in the palette is called Able Sisters, which is the pressed glitter in here. And this one is a really pretty light lavender icy type of glitter. Like it's really pretty when applied. And I can see it being one of those shades that can really transform an eye look depending on the shade that you apply underneath of it. But again, the formula of it is really nice. It does not crumble nor flake. It doesn't get everywhere that you don't want it to be. And also it does not feel thick or goopy on the eyes. As for the Super Shock Shadow in Balloon Pop, I really like this and I like it just as much as when I used it with the Nook Ink Palette when I reviewed that one. Like it's just so glittery and super intense looking and just really easy to apply. And what I like about it too is that it is a little bit more of a unique color because it kind of looks a little bit different depending on the colors that you pair around it. Because when I used it with the Nook Ink Palette, it had like this like grayish like pink kind of vibe to it. Whereas right now it almost looks like a light baby pink. To me, it's one of those shades that will literally pair well with any type of eye look. As for the Press Powder Blush in Flower Power, I really like this still. I think it's a really fun color. I will say, though, it is a little bit on the brighter side, so if you don't like brighter kind of blushes, you might not like this one because of it. And also, I feel like this blush is going to be one of those colors that's going to be perfect for springtime. But again, I really like that it has a medium buildable formula to it, and also that it has just kind of like this skin-like finish to it. It just looks really pretty on the face. And last but not least, let's talk about the Just a Tint in Coconut Juice, and honestly, I love the formula and the color of this. It's kind of like a sheer chocolatey color with like a purple undertone to it. It's really pretty. If you like chocolatey brown lipsticks and you're looking for something a little bit more on the sheer side, I think you would absolutely love this color. 
Originally, I was going to use this one with the What A Hood palette, but I'm so happy that I decided to use it with this palette instead, because I feel like that purple undertone that it has really got played up with this eye look with the purples in it. Like, I don't know, I'm really obsessed with it. And if you've never tried out a Just A Tint before, honestly, it's a very underrated product from ColourPop, especially if you're looking for a lip color that is really good for everyday wear, because it just has like this nice sheer wash of color to it, but at the same time, it's not like so sheer you have to like really like you know, go in. It does have like a good amount of coverage to it, but at the same time, it isn't like a true lipstick. And texture wise, it is kind of like a luxurious lip balm. I wouldn't necessarily call it again a lipstick, nor would I call it like a traditional like chapstick either. It's kind of like right in the middle. It kind of has like this silky feel on the lips. And for me personally, I really like to throw these in my bag for on the go just because they're just so convenient. Like if you feel like your lips are feeling dry or if you want like a little bit of color before a meeting, you just grab this, pop it on and you're ready to go. So when it comes down to it, would I recommend these products that we used today to you guys? And honestly, I think they're overall really nice and really great quality. Like if you like the colors of them, I think you're going to be really happy with them overall. And if we're really keeping it real, this label of the ball palette is my favorite eyeshadow palette we have used so far. Again, I haven't used all the palettes yet. I've used three out of four. We still have to use What A Hoop tomorrow. But again, like I really like this one and the formula is just so amazing. And again, it has a really unique vibe to it and a really fun color story. And if you're a beginner, you will not struggle with this one whatsoever. Like the shades in here literally blend themselves out like a dream. But yeah, so in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this look right here. And also let me know what your favorite products are so far out of the collection and what you're going to be picking up. But as always though, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on my Instagram page or my TikTok, it is at Brianna Faye as well. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!